it's shaking. If you want to really find out, the tectonics lab is the place. Here you can measure earthquakes with the Nismograph and push the Earth's crust around with the Morph Master 5000. Then there's the fault finder. Yep, this puppy will get you in touch with seismic stations from around the world where you can get data to pinpoint a quake. The tectonics lab shakes! Huh? When an earthquake happens, it sends vibrations out through the Earth. The earthquake vibrations move in waves. The nismograph can sense these vibrations, and that jiggles a pen which records the wave on the paper. That's the sign of an earthquake passing by. After a quake happens, you can use the sliding bars to measure how far away it was. If you think that's cool, press the cool button and I'll tell you how. Cool. Earthquakes shake! They prove that the Earth's surface is always changing. When an earthquake happens, it releases a huge amount of energy. No, 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 a, a tremendously huge amount of energy. Now, this energy moves out from the earthquake in two different kinds of waves. First, there are primary waves, or pressure waves, called P waves. They get here first. They look like this. Then there are secondary, or shear waves, called S waves, which take a little longer to show up. They look like this. Since they both come from the same spot, we can tell how far away the quake was by measuring the gap between the waves. It doesn't tell you where it happened, just how far away. It's like counting the seconds between a lightning strike and the sound of its thunder. The nismograph can barely measure this one. It's, it's the bill wave. The fault finder will help you locate any earthquakes throughout the entire world! <laughs> or you can look at great quakes through history! <laughs> or try to locate a new quake. All you have to do is get seismic data, then pinpoint the epicenter using circles. Or you can make a milkshake! <laughs> mm, how did that button get there? Cool. Yo, dude! What's shaking? <laughs> oh, <clears throat> hi. Sooner or later the Earth will be. It's always moving and shaking. When two of the Earth's plates move or crack, the vibrations they make move out from the center of the motion, known as the epicenter, and travel through the Earth, shaking things up. The fault finder is linked to other laboratories around the world, all recording the same earthquake from a different point on the Earth. When we put the information together, we can get an idea of where the earthquake happened and a picture of what the inside of the Earth looks like. I'll tell you this, it's always shaking. Dude! Huh? Most earthquakes happen very close to where two of the Earth's crustal plates meet. See all those dots? Each one is an epicenter of a major earthquake that happened sometime in history. Most of them are located near where two of the Earth's plates bump into each other. This ring of plate edges here is called the Ring of Fire. Lots of volcanoes and earthquakes happen along its edge. So if you live on or around here, you've got a ringside seat. <laughs> Oh, hi. How's it going, babe? No, no major earthquakes recorded here in the past few hours. Can you believe it? Oh, my sushi is here. Gotta go. Mmm, banana smoothie.
Huh? If you want to take a very close look at something, just open the drawer and click on a specimen vial. The magnified image will appear on the monitor. To compare one specimen to another, click on the compare button. Then click on another sample. They'll both appear on the monitor side by side. <laughs> There's a whole new world down there. Cool. There's a wild, woolly, unseen world right under our noses. This is a microscope, a light microscope. It uses regular light. It magnifies things so they look anywhere from two to three hundred times their normal size. Now this is an electron microscope. It lets us see things that even a light microscope can't. We use some of the tiniest particles we know, called electrons, and bounce them off of whatever we put under the microscope. The electrons bounce back and give us a picture of whatever we put in there. Using this, we can make things appear ten thousand times bigger than they do to your naked eye. You'll see that smooth surfaces are really rough. And tiny creatures look ferocious. <coughs> and even dust particles have a whole new look under the electron microscope. Cool. This is the weatherator. With it, you can make your own weather. Turn it on, then make two choices. The temperature of the air and the temperature of the water that you want to start with. That's the now side. Then choose the temperatures you want the air and water to change to. That's the later side. Then hit the go button and see what happens. The weatherator is wild! Cool. Weather is cool and hot, whether you like it or not. See, whether you like the weather, <laughs> that's a joke. Anyway, the Weather Raider is a way scaled down model of the Earth's atmosphere. I mean, we can't put the entire atmosphere in here. There's trillions of liters of air. But with this baby, we can do simulations of weather. We can make clouds, or my personal favorite, rain. Yeah, love that rain. <laughs> love it. Cool. 
You started out with warm air and cool water. Good conditions for fog. Now, fog is made of tiny liquid water droplets that just hang around low in the air. That's what scientists like you and me call fog. <laughs> but when you switch to cool air and warm water, lots more water evaporated from below and then chilled out in the sky. That made clouds form higher up in the chamber. And the high clouds made rain. <laughs> high clouds and rain.